I thank you one and all for coming. And it's a pleasure to uh, see some familiar faces uh, who I've drawn and painted. And, and, and um, I would like sometime during the course of this whole occasion to point out some of those people and have them uh, stand by their pictures and <laughs> see how they made it. <laughs> well, I don't really mean that. Um, it is it is good to be here, and it's good to uh, it's good to see so many familiar faces and unfamiliar faces, and, and all of that's re reason enough to have have this exhibition. I titled this exhibition "Still Looking After All These Years" because it covers so many years and such a long time. And it goes from the 60s right up until last month. And um, my first impulse was to show these paintings done so long ago because I'd never shown them together before. And I thought they represented an important period in my own development, one that I continued to be interested in. But in terms of the paintings, I've left behind to do other things. And so they occupy this kind of rarefied spot in my history and, and, and that I'm happy to look at again and share with you. Um, they, I think they also, in some curious way, show an aspect of 20th, 20th century American painting that is that's, that keeps recycling and um, that's the painting from life, painting the figure from life and drawing from life and drawing has always been an important component of an artist's training, or it was, and maybe still is. I hope it will be, and will be again, maybe is the way I should put it. But um, the drawings uh, started way before I started doing these paintings, and they've continued in some kind of continuum from those days in the 60s, when I, 60s and 70s when I made these paintings up until now. And, next week and next month, I can keep doing these drawings, can't get enough, so long as I meet interesting and, and uh, charming people to pose for me, patient people. Uh, so that's, that's what this is all about. It's, about. it's about the people I've known, the people I've met, people I've liked looking at, and, and it's about my still looking after all these years, so that's the reason for the title. So with these conceits in mind, I approached Daryl Taylor uh, some years ago about uh, having, having a show, whether he'd ever seen these paintings of mine, and he hadn't, and he was interested, and he thought I could probably fill the gallery, maybe with, uh, if I included, you know, paintings from Mexico and watercolors and uh, you know, lots of other stuff, and I said, no, I didn't want to do that, I really wanted to do only figurative work that was, had been done from life with the model always present while I was making the drawing and the drawing and all the paintings. So um, finally, you know, uh, Daryl agreed to this and, and uh, I said my problem would be that I have so much stuff I don't know if I can narrow it down. No matter how large your gallery is, I don't know how to narrow it down. In fact, just four days ago, we were here culling drawings, deciding, no, not that one, maybe this one, maybe these ten should go, and so this is a fraction. I don't care what Daryl says about this being all the work I've ever done. He knows that's not true. <laughs> so, so the continuum is from, from working from life in the paintings and working from life in the drawings continually, continuously, and confoundingly, uh, up until up until now, uh, so uh, that was an easy trick when I was teaching because I always had uh, students and I would kind of uh, pull a scam on them and have a day during the course of the semester or several days. And after a while, it got to be fairly fairly popular, and everybody would say, "When are we going to have the drawing day when we draw each other?" And so we would draw each other and we would pose, you know, one on one, and and one for two or three. And, and I would always draw, and so I have, a, I have a backlog of hundreds, thousands maybe, of drawings of students. And at some point, 
at some point I began to wise up and I wrote the date and the name of the person. So, so, I was <laughs> so most of these over here do have the names written. In fact, most of them have the names written on them. There's a group of drawings over here that maybe don't have the names of the people. And uh, some of those that are unnamed are earlier drawings. <clears throat> so, uh, some of those are from uh, the early 70s. So, so here this is this, uh, this this trip for me. This you know an ego trip and a trip down memory lane, and it's all you know fond recollections. And uh, I I I understand it all, but I think it might be a little confusing to you because. Because there's so much work here, and because it's spanning 40 some years of work. And so I thought maybe a very logical and practical thing to do, especially uh, to make this as brief as possible, and I promise it will be brief, um, it would be to give you some sort of timeline reference so you know so you know when this was done compared to when that was done. So let me try to quickly summarize that. Uh, the, the paintings began in the mid-60s, these, these paintings that you're seeing, began in the mid-60s. And they were done when I would um, invite a person or, or care of people into my studio and I would uh, make a few drawings, like some of these paintings have drawings that accompany them. For instance, this painting of the Bergesons had, I think, seven drawings with them. And so before I'd make paintings of these people, I would do some drawings just to be, to get myself familiar with, with what these people look like. And um, they, they end up being kind of interesting to me to see with the paintings, not that they're the best drawings in the, in the show, but they're interesting to see with, with the paintings. So um, the, the very, very earliest ones, uh, like the one of the Bergsons, which is here on the wall. Um, they were done really quickly, and maybe one or two set settings, sittings, settings, sittings, um, and they were they were painted broadly and, and with house painting house painters brushes, um, and so they're kind of um, a little slapdash and slippery and, and yummy that way, but. Um, as time went on, I somehow or other I wanted to slow the process down and get more particular, somehow a bit more realistic. And the one immediately to the left of the Bergesons is an example of that. So, so um, <coughs> this group of paintings spans only about six years, and they go from from the. the broadly painted paintings like the Ferguson painting to a rather more specific painting like the painting of the jumping deer portrait or this painting of, uh, of Luke Cole over here. Um, and um, that's one way that you, looking at the show later, I, maybe you're bored already and you'll be leaving, but maybe you will now look at the show a little bit longer. Um, you might be able to tell, tell this changes just in a six year period of what happened in the paintings, and I'm not going to go into this at any length. But, but this realism became to that began to um, be more and more a, 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 a passion, maybe an obsession or something with me, and I, I began to do entirely different kind of work, which grew out of that realistic strain that's in that you see in some of these paintings here tonight. Um, So, so that kind of covers what the pain, where the paintings are, that little six-year period. But the drawings, you know, go for, for the, the succeeding 40 years after, after those paintings were done and after I'd stopped doing these figure paintings. And uh, as I said, the students were the core of how I was able to keep drawing the figure all the time. And, and so all around, all around the galleries, you see drawings that were done at different decades, even. Um, and this is kind of a 
favorite group of mine, uh, drawings done in the late 90s and early, early 2000s. Um, and uh, along with each one of these drawings, you know, comes to me memories of these people and, and memories of teaching and, and pleasures of, of that. But I think that uh, the, the drawings throughout this show are one of the reasons I wanted to have the show is because I think the drawings and paintings um, might have some meaning to students today even. And, um, and the people who are teaching students today. Uh, because I think that the, the, the pleasures for me in drawing always had to do with looking and seeing, in some sense recording, but at the same time inventing. It had to do with being serious and, and having fun at the same time. It had to do with uh, uh, taking chances and being a little bit risky, or maybe very risky, or maybe not so risky. Uh, with with materials and how uh, it's such fun to combine two materials that are often not thought of as being likely to be companions together in the same drawing. So I just say try it. You know, try it. See how much fun it is. It's, uh, you know, spicier. It's like tempo changes in music or key changes. You, you uh, get great pleasure out of those materials and the interchanges that happen. So that's part of part of what this show wanted to be about for me. That was so, so, somehow the old teacher in me wanting to keep teaching. And some handle on the show, and that is in this room, second on the room on my right, is uh, there are two walls of drawings that are uh, about experiences that I had. Um, not exactly teaching, sort of teaching, and outside of my my uh, zone of comfort. <laughs> One group is um, a group called Gary and his guys, and Gary was a friend of mine in Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, and uh, he, Gary at that time was uh, wheelchair bound, and he had a lot of guys coming over and helping him do various things around this house, including getting him up and down stairs and into his car and whatever. And so I, I had started doing some watercolors at Gary's house, and I think it's all written there on the wall, on the wall, a little plaque, but um, it tells you about Gary and his guys and, and how I came to make that group of drawings of those, uh, those Mexican youth. And on the wall opposite it are drawings that I made when I was teaching on, you know, on, on Fulbright in, at the Universidad de los Andes in Merida, Venezuela. And uh, as fate would have it, I arrived there just as all the universities in Venezuela went on strike, which they did periodically, but I didn't really know that. And I was not prepared to not teach, and so I proceeded to be a scab and, <laughs> and um, pulled whole drawing classes in the basement, in the secret, in secret. And a lot of people started coming, faculty and students and hangers-on and would-be artists and whatever. It was great fun. <laughs> and those drawings on the, whatever, the west wall, I bet it is, um, are among the maybe hundreds that I made at that time. Um, another thing that might help you kind of understand what, how I put this show together is that I love growing people, the same person, over and over again, so that if I don't get his mouth right on this drawing, maybe I will on the next drawing, or his ears, or his nostrils, or whatever. You know. And so I've done, well, a lot of you know this, some of you know this. Um, I've done lots of drawings of, of people until they just can't take it anymore and they go away. Um, and Seth is laughing at that because he didn't last very long. But um, <laughs> Gretchen and Howard have posed for me. Where are they? There's Howard. And Howard is represented, this is Howard. Howard is represented, uh, yeah, right here now, uh, represented on, on the wall in the far back corner. Uh, seven drawings of Howard, I think. And um, Gretchen is posed for me. She wiggled a lot. 
Um, this Gretchen, not this Gretchen. This Gretchen and her John came to us tonight from Chicago and from Oaxaca, Mexico. And wow. This guy right here, I just, pardon me, I'll do this right now because I told him I was going to embarrass him if I could. Uh, this guy and these two drawings came from California today to be with us. Where are you, Jim Leck Band? Oh, well, he's, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you are. And, and, and my old student and buddy, uh, Evan Clarissimo. I don't know where he is. There he is. There's Evan. Uh, and I just see so many people. Ed Kurtz is here. I can't believe. And Joshua Heiser is taking, I know, Joshua making movies. Yeah, and Ann Gerber. <laughs> Ann Gerber came from California. And she will now stand next to her painting, you know, after this is all over, so that she can compare, compare notes. And uh, this is getting away from me. But without further ado, here's David Williamson. <laughs> Who's right there? Yeah. Are actually also right there. And we're still together. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't know what a joke that is. People say, "Don't let Joe draw us together as a couple because that means you'll probably split up." <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I've lost track of my notes. Uh, okay. Now, uh, so 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 I was I was just this is really the last. Last thing, last part of this. So I, I work on these people in, in series, and all around the outside of the, the end of that wall, and in that last room, and in this room, there are a group of about 10 people who I've done numbers and numbers of drawings of, and these are selections of those. And Howard is one of them, and uh, well, you'll see them. You'll go around. And Douglas Stanks has arrived in Royce Chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> well, see if you can find them in the wall. <laughs> 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 this will not be embarrassing to them. It will only be embarrassing to me if you can't identify them. <laughs> okay, and finally, and this is the end, and then I will uh, wander around the gallery and answer any questions. Actually, we could have some questions right now if you have some, but uh, but uh, but I will be around and, and we can talk if you have questions. But the last thing that I want to say is that um, I thought this drawing, I hadn't put it in. This drawing is the last drawing, the last one done. Actually, the last drawing that I did with one of Royce, where he is, but hit the drawing I made of you last week is not in the show. The drawing I made myself a week before last, or three weeks ago, or whatever, is one of is is the latest drawing that's in this show, and I think I had to put it in because it seemed to me that it, as much as any other drawing in the in, in the whole show, seems to to um, uh, uh, not break that thread that that acts as a continuum from what I was starting to do in the paintings. Up until now, still doing the same thing, or as I said in the title of the show, still looking after all these years. Thank you very much.